Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today, we have these little look-alike salad, traditional chicken marsala, and Bavarian cream with berries and cake. So let's get started. First thing I want to work on today is the Bavarian cream. And so for that, I need, um, you know, the, I need the, uh, some boiling water to dissolve my gelatin. So Bavarian cream is essentially sort of your typical um, custard sauce or custard pudding. But the difference is that instead of the thickening being the um, cornstarch or flour, such as for when you make it for a, as a pastry cake filling, uh, in the Bavarian cream, the thickening agent is the unflavored gelatin. And I just put two tablespoons in, um, in this bowl, and I'm going to sprinkle some hot water on it to dissolve it. So I'm going to set it aside because I don't want it really hot for when I use it. Set that there. So essentially, as I was saying, the Bavarian cream is like your typical pudding with milk and cream. Uh, excuse me, milk and um, egg yolks and sugar and your flavorings. Most common flavoring being vanilla that's used. So I'm going to start with um, two cups of whole milk. So here I have my one cup measuring. I'm going to measure about two cups of, um, as I said, whole milk. Now, I, as you know, um, if you watch the show a lot, I'm always using low-fat milk or skim milk. But here I'm using whole milk and the reason for that is because it, the main difference as well with the uh, Bavarian cream is that it uses whipped cream as well so it's usually half milk and half whipped cream or heavy cream so um, in the philosophy that we have here about keeping things lean and simple I'm using milk instead so here I have two cups of milk, and to that I'm going to add half a cup of sugar. So I'm going to add my half a cup of sugar here, and the reason we heat the milk is because sugar, to, to help dissolve the sugar. So this um, Bavarian cream dessert is simple to make. It's a little bit time consuming because you do have to heat up the milk, and then um, we'll combine the milk with the egg yolks and cook that until it starts to thicken. And that you need to do under, on really low um, heat. Otherwise, you'll scramble the eggs, and you don't want to do that. But we don't have to worry about that now with the milk. With the milk, we just stir it and um, heat it up to make sure that the um, sugar melts. So in the meantime, here I have the, sh the um, egg yolk. I'm going to whip these up with just a, a whisk. All right, so let's see how the milk's doing. The sugar seems dissolved, but I'm going to wait until the, uh, the milk uh, heats up a little bit. I'd like it a little warmer. One last stir to make sure that the milk uh, and the sugar, the sugar has uh, dissolved here in the milk. All right, I think it's ready. So now comes the part where you really have to be brave because this is hot milk going into the egg yolks in here. That are, these were, um, I used six egg yolks. And so I'm going to lower the heat because this, uh, the mixture, once I mix, once I mix the uh, milk with the sugar, I'm going to put it back on the heat, typically as it's done when you're making um, pudding. All right, so the, the trick here is to make sure that you continue stirring as you pour the hot milk. I think I need to change hands. There we go. So I start stirring beforehand, and you want to do this slowly. Well, pour slowly, but whisk vigorously. You don't want to scramble those uh, egg yolks. One of those things that you can't undo. So there we go. Okay, so here's where you have to have patience. 
and no double tasking because you really have to keep an eye on this mixture. So you, you have the egg yolk, and the sugar, and the milk mixture, and you really have to keep your, you have to keep stirring it because you don't want the eggs to cook if it gets, if it gets too hot. So if you can take a close up of this, you see how there's all these little bubbles on here now. As, the, as you come close to the point where it's done, where it's sort of, you don't want it to boil, but you want it to get to a real good simmer, um, these bu bubbles will dissipate. So that's a good indication that it's coming to, um, you know, it's, it's pretty hot and you want to maybe take it out then. And then we have a test at the end, at that point, where with the wooden spoon you want to go in and if it coats the back or the front, if it coats the spoon with a nice coating, then you know it's ready. But I'll show you when we get to it. So I can see it there. If I go like that, you can see. See it? How is that streak? So I'm going to take it off because I don't want it to scramble. The, I don't want the eggs to scramble. So I'm going to stir it a little more. Add a teaspoon of vanilla. And this is um, at a point where you can flavor it with anything. Uh, vanilla, if you want to add it, add some rum to it, you can. I like the family cooking piece of it, so I leave the alcohol out, usually, except in some cases. I'm going to stir that. So I'm going to let it cool for just a few minutes um, and then add the gelatin to it. Now to this, I'm going to add a cup of berries. And here I have raspberries and blueberries that I've added a couple of tablespoons of, a couple of tablespoons of sugar to. I'm going to um, gently stir them around because I want, I want to um, so to sweeten the fruit just in case they're not, because it's hard to tell. Just could use a little, um, a little sugar. And the, also you can add some other um, flavorings here too, rum or something if you wanted to. Okay. So this is set. Then here I'm going to add the, um, the gelatin. Now the eggs have thickened it a little bit, so the gelatin are going to, is going to thicken it further. So now I'm going to put this in, you can, what's nice about it is you can put it into any kind of mold that you want. If you have a, a mold dish uh, serving platter that you have, you can um, use that. I'm just going to use a simple uh, dish here. And I like to add some cake on the bottom. So I'm using um, a homemade sponge cake that I've made. And I've, let, I've cut it about um, half inch thick, but half inch thick. And I'm layering the bottom of the pan. And I'm just going to um, add the mixture over it. I'm going to add my fruit to it. Okay, so I'm gently going to pour this over. All right, and then sometimes you might need to rearrange the fruit as it tends to settle out not evenly. So I use the sponge cake, but you could also use an angel food cake if you like. Pound cake would work well too. Okay, so that's that for our Bavarian cream with berries and cake. So I'm going to put this aside before I put it in the refrigerator because it's still um, it's still hot. So you want to wait till it cools and then put it in the refrigerator, and you can serve it within about three hours. The next thing we're going to make is the Caesar look-alike salad. So why is it look-alike? You say, and not the real Caesar? Well, because we are using our old buddy yogurt again to give it a lot of um, flavor and texture to our, um, to our salad instead of the 
um, traditional ingredients that go into a Caesar salad dressing. So here I have, this is a big head of lettuce. Here I have a half a head of that big lettuce, romaine lettuce. You know, romaine lettuce looks like this long one. And I've just taken half of this. This was a big head, it was large. So I cut it in half, and I'm just using half of it. And it's um, lettuce, um, romaine lettuce is a good salad to have because it's nice and green, so it offers a lot of um, nutrients that we typically look for in vegetables. So here I have um, enough for about four people. And the first thing I'm, gonna, I'm going to add to it here, I have some, um, what would Caesar salad be without, any kind of Caesar salad be without uh, garlic. Um, so instead of adding the garlic to the salad, uh, I've added it to, um, I've infused the oil that I'm going to use with the garlic. So if you can see, I have a piece of garlic in here, like a clove of garlic that I've cut in half, and it's infusing the, the oil. So the oil has a nice aroma of garlic and a slight flavor, but not a heavy duty garlic flavor. So if you really like that garlic flavor, you can certainly toss it in with your salad. So uh, before I do that, I'm going to add some salt and some pepper to the um, salad dressing. So I'm going to add about a, qu a quarter of a teaspoon of um, salt. I'm going to measure this because I'm adding it to that. And then about uh, one eighth of a teaspoon, which is half of a quarter teaspoon. There we go. So I'm going to mix these in here. I know this is really simple. So I'm going to toss this. Perfect. All right, so then instead of the egg, because you know how you use uh, a raw egg in uh, Caesar salad, what I'm going to use about a couple of tablespoons of yogurt. And then two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm just rolling the uh, lemon here just to and tenderize it a little bit so that I get more juice. These are beautiful lemons. And we got the salad and a lot of these, this, these products at Calories' Farm Stand and Garden Center. So I'm just going to squeeze some uh, lemon juice here. And I've shown this before. I like the fork trick. I think it, it Really, it helps with getting a lot of the um, juice out. So I need about two tablespoons, which is what you get when you have half a lemon. So now I'm going to pour this on. And toss that a little bit, and then I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese along with this. And that's right here. I think there's a little bit left in here, so I'm just going to sprinkle it on top. Okay, so here's the Caesar salad. So we'll put this over here. Next on our menu list, we have the traditional chicken marsala that we are going to serve with pearled couscous. And so for the couscous, which I'm going to stop first, is I'm going to heat some water. So here's the couscous. It's multicolored. And I'm going to, um, here I have about a cup and a half of water that I'm going to bring to a boil. As soon as the water comes to a boil, we're going to, we're going to add the um, pearl couscous. And couscous is really a, a, like a pasta. It's made with, um, with um, flour, uh, semolina flour. So, um, Yes, it's like a pasta. So we're going to wait till that boils, and we'll add the couscous then. In the meantime, here I have the chicken. And uh, the chicken marsala is, as the name implies, made with um, 
uh, Marsala wine. First, so the first thing we're going to do is um, brown it on both sides. We're going to flour it and we're going to add salt and pepper to the chicken and then flour it and um, saute it a little bit. I'm going to use about, I don't have to be too exact here, so use about a um, sprinkle. Of, look at, so I think it's about a teaspoon, but I won't use the whole thing. On both sides. There we go. Wash my hand. So I want to add salt to the chicken so that it gives it um, a little more flavor. So I'm going to flour it, and I'm going to use the um, old baggy trick. And I'm going to add about oh, half a cup of um, flour to that. Now remember, you know, this is a cooking that you do at home, so the fewer items that you need to wash, the better. And this bag will just go away, so there we go. That will do it. So to the flour, I'm also going to add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. Just a little bit. Because you want to flavor everything. You want to layer each, each layer. You don't, some items, some, you know, flavorings you don't want to have too much of, so I don't want to have too much pepper. That's very, very personal. So the alternative way of doing this is I could have laid down the chicken, uh, uh, get, a, get a, a dish and put my flour in there and then dredge the chicken in it, which is fine. You can do it like that. I just think this is much neater and saves me some work. Put in the chicken. Plus, I think it's fun the other way with the dredging it in the flour. It, um, it gets a little messy. And here I can just shake it, make sure that the flour coats the chicken everywhere evenly. You can let the kids do this too if you have kids at home. There we go. So I'm going to set this aside. All right, so the water's boiling. I'm going to add my couscous here. I have, a, I have a cup for that in here. And then I'm going to lower this and let it simmer for about, um, for about 10 minutes until all the water is absorbed. So the couscous is going, so now I'm going to start working on my chicken. So this is the main main star of the menu today. So this is traditional chicken marsala that calls for rosemary. And if you wanted to, you could also add a bay leaf. But we're not going to today. We're just going to add um, some garlic, some rosemary, and a uh, salad. So I have my garlic, and now I'm going to cut up my shallot. You can use onions if you if you didn't um, if you didn't have a shallot, so. white white or red onion, either one. A small would do. All right. So these ingredients here are ready. So I'm going to turn on the heat, and I'm going to add about three to four tablespoons of olive oil. This comes this this dish comes together really fast, like five, ten minutes and you're done. Okay, so there we have about three or four tablespoons. You can measure them exactly if you want to. And then I'm gonna add my two cloves of garlic, the shallot, cook that all together. And I'm also going to add some rosemary here. I've got three three four little sprigs. You could add a large giant one if you wanted to. And what I like about adding the rosemary to the to this dish is that it, it really kind of um, gives it more depth of flavor. Well, that cooks. I'm going to cut up my mushroom. Take some of the stems off. You can take the stems completely off if you want to, but 
I leave them on. Well, take the ends off. And then just slice them. And sometimes at home, if I'm in a real rush, I quarter them. But I think slicing them looks much nicer. And I do about a cup or so. There we go. This is good. These are beautiful large mushrooms. If you have the small ones that come in a package, you might just want to use half or the whole thing if, if you like a lot of mushrooms. All right, so this seems ready, so I'm going to add the chicken. And how easy is this? I'm just taking it out, shaking off the excess flour, and no cleaning up after that. Just toss it all away. I'm going to put this in and brown one side. I'm going to cook that for about three or four minutes. About four minutes. Make sure that it's nice and brown. Okay, I think we can go ahead and turn here. This one's perfect. So now I'm going to add the, uh, the mushroom. So mushrooms can be pretty, uh, they, they have their own flavor, but I think uh, they can be somewhat bland, so adding a little bit more salt at this point might be a good idea. So I'm going to um, turn the meat a little bit just to make sure that the, um, that the mushroom, make sure that the mushrooms get cooked as well. And at this point, I'm also going to add the Marsala wine. And I'll probably turn it a couple more times, too. So I'm going to add half a cup. When you're adding alcohol, of any kind of alcohol, to your dishes, with the exception of wine, or, you know, when you're cooking, you always want to pour it in a different um, container. You don't want to pour from the bottle. smells like Marsala wine, which is a rather sweet wine. So this is, uh, you know, you got the sauce right in it. But so you got your meat and your sauce, a little bit of vegetable in the, in the mushrooms. But so you do want to turn your meat over again to make sure that it all gets flavored. And let it cook another five minutes or so. So this sounds really exotic, chicken marsala, but you can, um, you know, you can make it at home in no time. Checking on the couscous here, which is perfect. I'm going to take this off. So what's nice about this dish as well is that I'm not going to do any additional dressing or sauces for the couscous because I'm going to serve the chicken over it. And the chicken already has a beautiful um, sort of a cream sauce to it with the marsala. This is perfect. I'm going to just kind of loosen it up a little, fluff it up a little bit. So I'm going to chop up some parsley. So I'm going to need about a couple of tablespoons of parsley. You know, that's the other thing about cooking is that you really have to take the time out and appreciate all the different flavors and, and aromas that you get from simple ingredients. Sometimes we're so rushed that we don't, we don't do that. I sort of tried to convey that thought in my cookbook, Delicious Simplicity, about the joys of just cooking with simple ingredients and turning out something wonderful. So this looks ready to me, so I'm going to take this out. But before I do, I'm going to add about, uh, I think there's about a couple of tablespoons here of um, parsley that I've just chopped up. Just give it a quick toss.
and it's ready. I'm going to take it off the heat. Put it there for now. And so here's the best part. I'm going to prepare the dish. So here's the couscous. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to put it on the bottom. So now I'm just going to plate this over. And if you wanted to serve the, the couscous separately, of course you could. I'm going to put the mushrooms and the shallot on top. Some of the oil as well. So all the flavors are there. Isn't this gorgeous? Look at that. You wouldn't want to eat this. There. So now we are going to take out our dessert. So this this is one that we had made earlier because um, it needs to set. So this is the Bavarian cream with the berries and the uh, sponge cake on the bottom. And I'm going to have to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to cut out a cube, a square. And you can put this into any kind of a dish or a mold. You want to have a pretty shape. I just went for the simple. So I'm going to cut out this quarter piece here. And that first piece is always the hardest. So let's see what happens. There we go. Like, oh, there we go. We did it. But isn't that beautiful? We can see a lot of the fruit sort of floats through the top and the cake as well. So you have cake and you have um, cream all around. So it's kind of like inside up cake. All right, so here we have another wonderful, delicious meal ma that we made today with a simple homemade um, recipe of Caesar salad lookalike dressing. Um, our main dish of couscous with the chicken marsala that has its own uh, sauce that, that seasons the, the couscous. And of course, our wonderful dessert here, Bavarian, Bavarian cream with berries and, and cake. Um, so a perfect meal for summer, and we want to thank you, say thank you to Calories' Farm Stand and Garden Center for some of the wonderful products that they provided, and we want to thank you for joining us again this week, and please do it again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>